Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here back with your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Ripple and XRP and a ton of things. So let's just dive in and let's talk about a few things. So first off, I hope everybody had a great day or a great night wherever you guys are watching this. Currently, it is about 1.30 in the morning. Uh, we are watching a few things right now as we do kind of usher into the next few days. The number one thing that we have been paying attention to is the Ethereum merge. I do think that this is actually going to be pretty bearish for the entire market. I think that this is going to be a sell the news um, event. And I think that this is going to be one of the largest sell the news events um, in the history of crypto so far. So, you know, this is one that I I am watching closely 48 hours do remain uh, since this post you know it has dropped a little bit but you know we're not too far behind it's about 24 minutes ago when this did drop uh, so definitely pay attention to the ethereum merge we are watching this closely and also not to mention the CPI numbers. They are going to be released here soon. Um, this is around like 8 in the morning EST. So we do have a little bit more to go until this is officially live. Uh, CPI, the Ethereum merge, it is fun times this week. And a lot of this could be bearish. It could be bullish. We don't specifically know until things do happen. Uh, but I will say this. You know, it is a big warning for these events. Definitely pay attention to them. September is going to be a pretty big month. We have so much to look forward to in this month. So definitely watch closely for that. And also, we just seen Fidelity plan to offer Bitcoin as well as other crypto, you know, assets as well, trading to its 34 million clients. Uh, this was pretty large as well. Uh, talking about Fidelity, you know, I think that some of these names are just the beginning of what's to come. I think that when we really kind of look at a lot of these major, you know, companies, you know, we soon will see nearly every single one of them offering crypto driven, you know, products as well as offerings. The reason why is it's pretty simple, right? You know, when I look at crypto, it's almost like being able to invest in the internet uh, before it even actually happens. You know, I think that this is probably one of the biggest opportunities of our lifetime. And when we really kind of look at that, you know, these other major players like Fidelity, etc., they also understand exactly where crypto is headed. You know, currently, when we really kind of look at the numbers right now, you know, you can pretty much tell how early we actually are in this market. Uh, but Fidelity is a giant. I mean, you know, when you look at the numbers, you know, we help over 40 million people feel more confident in their most important financial goals, manage employee benefit programs for nearly 23,000 businesses and support more than 3,600 advisory firms. So, you know, they are a giant. Like I said, you know, definitely pay attention to uh, these, you know, companies joining in on the fun. You know, they do see exactly where crypto is headed, like I said. And uh, by the numbers we do see here. You know, $9.9 .9 trillion asset under administration, $3.7 trillion total uh, discretionary assets, and 2.8 million daily average trades. Very large numbers. And this is, you know, recently updated as of June of this year. And uh, I think that they do have, let me check out their advisories as well, or um, advisors and institutions. So I don't know if they mention any other names here. I know that they just uh, mentioned these three um, announcements here, but... There's not much else to that. Uh, I thought that there was going to be a little bit more, but you know, they do have a ton of locations. We actually do see that they have over 50, 57,000, sorry, uh, plus associates. And this is very large and it spans nine other countries across North America, Europe, Asia, and Australia. And uh, yeah, I mean like this is pretty large. And I think that this also like combine this with the BlackRock announcement, you know, we've been seeing a ton of, of adoption of crypto and a lot of these major companies moving in on crypto pretty quick and you know it's funny because when we look at where we are now compared to where we were just a few months ago they also do see the value proposition here in regards to jumping into crypto understanding crypto and offering crypto driven products so you got to give it up to them also the bis remember what i recently said in um i think it was a video from a week ago i believe we were talking about the buzzwords around, you know, these major players like BIS, the World Economic Forum, IMF, etc. Uh, this is from the BIS here. You know, the BIS CPMI requests feedback on its work on ISO 222 harmonization for cross-border payments as discussed in this article with full details to be published as part of a formal market uh, consultation at the end of 2022. Now, when we are focused on you know, the buzzwords, 
you know, cross border payments, every single time that I think of cross border payments, I could only, you know, go back to Ripple. And this is not because I'm biased on XRP or, you know, I am a substantial holder of XRP or anything like that. No, it's just because when we focus on things around the cross border payment sector, you know, we kind of just look at what is way more efficient than SWIFT. You know, SWIFT is old age technology and we actually do see this comment down here uh, where they are saying, you know, SWIFT is old using, you know, makeup new. Uh, please use new tech, XDC, XRP, XLM. And I mean, it is truth, right? Like when you look at SWIFT comparing it to any of these processes uh, within crypto, you look at the, you know, XRP method with Ripple. It is a very large, substantial innovation. And when you look at where these major players are positioned, like, you know, XRP has major connections. Uh, you know, with, with what Ripple has accomplished just recently, you know, they are bridging the gap for XRP to be utilized globally. And I do think that the BIS is also aware of what Ripple has accomplished. I think that all these major players are as well. Um, I think that it's only a matter of time before, you know, we do see the locks being unlocked for XRP to be utilized globally, specifically around some of these major players. Remember, you know, PNC, Bank of America, some major players around the world and the top 30 of the 100 banks, or I should say 30 of the top 100 banks, uh, were already signed up to utilize Ripple, you know, products, including XRP driven products, which is very large. Um, you know, there's no other projects in the space that are even close to that. If, I, if there was one, I would say maybe QNC. But again, you know, with what Ripple has accomplished in such a short amount of time, I will say this. The future is very bright for XRP and the future is very bright for, you know, Ripple as well. And talking about Ripple and talking about QNT, actually, uh, we do see over here from Ripple managing treasury flows for any business is never easy. But Latin, you know, faces particular challenges in this area, especially SMEs. Learn how the region is streamlining cross-border payments in an effort to strengthen local economies. Again, going back to cross-border payments. Cross-border payments is always going to be the key focus here. Now, you know, again, I take you back to June of 27 or uh, June 27th, sorry, of this year, you know, transforming cross-border payments in Latin America. This is from Quant. Uh, we do see a direct quote from Gilbert Verdian here, actually. He's saying moving to blockchain based payments and using networks like LAC chain can be vastly cheaper, easier and more efficient than re-engineering older payment infrastructures. And yes, this is exactly the key here. You know, when we really kind of look at, you know, crypto, it is truly disrupting key processes. DLT itself is going to not only fully disrupt sectors like cross-border payments, um, but it's going to make everything streamlined, everything more efficient. And we actually even see a quote down here, like DLT applications have the potential to vastly increase financial inclusion, improve the sustainability of supply chains, protect intellectual property, reduce fraud, and even support democratic processes. And, um, you know, with Overledger, I really do think that Overledger is going to be a key here. Remember, they already do, you know, like Quant and Ripple are already working together closely on a lot of things. Um, I would say that this is probably one of them. And the reason why we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. But um, first off, I do want to share with you guys a few use cases that they do have in the payments and banking sector. You know, first off, stablecoins, programmable currency, then remittance solutions using stablecoins and also wholesale stablecoin and account management functionality. So they are focused on some pretty big, you know, areas here. And uh, we do see down here, like the technological impact of DLTs has been profound. As of June of 2021, LAC chain reports that 1.6 million people have directly benefited from its services, uh, which is very large. Um, and this will continue to grow. You know, I, I look at, you know, I look forward to the day where crypto is, is being utilized on every single process. Um, it's going to be the underlying core technology of nearly every single process that is, you know, basically worked on on a day-to-day -day basis. Like if you think about it, you know, you go and send a transaction or you go and make a payment or do anything, you order something, you know, the day where crypto is a player behind every single one of those processes, that's going to be the day that crypto is no longer, you know, this small market that's worth 1 trillion, 3 trillion, 10 trillion. Like I look forward to the day where crypto is worth 50 plus trillion dollars in market cap. And why will it get to there? Well, you look at like the traditional equity markets and things like that. Like it's just comical how early we actually are uh, when everyone knows the technology here. Like if you are a part of the XRP community, if you are a part of, you know, everyday life around crypto, if you have been studying it, researching it, understanding it, you should all understand and know right now 
how early we are and how undervalued this market actually is. And if you do know, comment down below in the comments what you think the actual value of crypto is. And I'm not talking about all of crypto, I'm talking about the utility gems that we all know about. And also, by the way, Quant is already connecting 12 countries. We do see as if connecting 12 countries isn't enough. Quant and LAC chain have a larger vision to connect to other regional DLT ecosystems in America, Europe, Asia, and Africa. So they are going to continue to expand this. And I do believe that this is going to be beneficial for Ripple. Why? Well, because this was posted on June 27th. Just recently, this was posted on July 29th. You know, nearly a whole month later from Ripple, you know, piecing together Latin America's fractured uh, treasury flows. And again, you know, when we really kind of look at this, you can see the flaws within the systems and there's trillions of dollars worth of trapped capital in Nasha Vasho accounts, which we know Ripple is going after. Uh, they are focused on the SME market as well. You know, I even said this with line of credit from Ripple, like it is beneficial to these SMEs and it is all focused about liquidity. I mean, like liquidity is the focus point in a global market and we actually even do see like liquidity being focused up here you know liquidity is vital to the success and development of a business but the current methodology of sourcing liquidity to open new treasury accounts is a heavy tool on smaller enterprises 100 percent is and you know this is a perfect fit for ripple but also think about it like this you know the pieces of the puzzle will fall into place once something like this is fully disrupted why well because all of these other areas will see the efficiencies. They will see what this technology is doing, what it is unlocking, what it is, you know, disrupting at the core. They will all want to be a part of this. They see the revolution. All of these major players, you know, they don't let it on. You know, they're not going to sit here and, you know, publicly say, hey, you know, we are going to jump into crypto next week. No, it all happens all at once. They don't me mention anything. They don't let in, you know, anyone from the outside to know what they are doing. They just do it behind the scenes. To me personally, when we look at Ripple and even Quant as well, I do believe that there are strong NDAs in play. I think that there's going to be a lot more announcements like the Fid Fidelity one, like the BlackRock one, and it's going to be centered on some of these assets and companies like Ripple and Quant. And again, you know, <laughs> every single one of these announcements are centered around cross-border capital, okay? SMEs, it's focused on liquidity, slow transactions, settlement, instant settlement is a big key, transparency, and even they do mention down here, like the region is comprised of 17 countries, all with different and frequently ch uh, changing FX rates, processes, tax regulations, and banking structures. As noted in the previous section, additional resources generally unaffordable to SMEs are required to organize this extensive information and administer a proper course of action for the business. So they are trying to, you know, connect all of this, allow for things to be streamlined. I honestly will say this, right? when we really kind of focus on these major innovations, when we talk about these announcements like this, I know that this is going back to July. Trust me, I know that this isn't like the newest, you know, announcement from Ripple. But the reason why I bring this up, right, is because they are, you know, piecing together, uh, you know, th these major uh, fractured treasury flows. But it's also the idea that like, when you look at what Quant is doing here, they are also connecting everything to one. That is what Ripple is trying to do here as well. So these two are probably working together. I would say the big deal here is like probably these remittance solutions. I don't think that they need to utilize stable coins, but if they had to, then I, I, I could see stable coins issued out on the XRP ledger. Utilizing XRP is like a settlement token between a stable coin and like, you know, we'll just say like fiat currency for an example. I could see that being a use case here from uh, Ripple with Quant. But I do think that these are two players that are completely on different levels. Uh, when we look at like XRP as a token compared to like QNT as a token, you know, I just stack both of them. <laughs> There's like these two are not in competition. You know, if anything, Quant complements, you know, XRP and with what Ripple is doing as well. Like, you know, I think that Ripple could benefit greatly from working with Quant and they are already working together. You know, they are both on uh, the Digital Pound Foundation. They're both on the Digital Euro um, Association as well. And they are both on, I want to say Quant is, but I, I think that they might not be on the Digital Dollar Project, but I know Ripple is a part of it. So again, um, you could definitely see what is happening here.
and I'm very excited for the future around this market. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. But if you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on if you guys have more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, I hope that you all have a beautiful day, a beautiful night, wherever you guys are in this beautiful world. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.